what is going on? This is Medicosis Perfectionatus, where medicine makes perfect sense. Let's resume our biology playlist. In the last video, we talked about the endocrine pancreas. Today, I'll talk about the gonads, the ovaries and the testicles. The ovaries will make ova. Testicles will make sperms. Sperm plus ovum equals zygote. Hashtag fertilization. In the female genital tract, where is the gonad? Here, the ovaries. And in males, the testicle. This is my biology playlist. Please watch these videos in order. For a more detailed explanation, I have an endocrinology playlist. Now, today we're talking about the gonads. We're not talking about fertilization. Fertilization was discussed before in this biology playlist. These videos discuss the subject of fertilization, blastulation, implantation, embryogenesis, etc. When it comes to the endocrine system, you have the CEO, general manager, followed by employees and independent contractors, who are the ones that listen to the manager, only the employees. The CEO is the hypothalamus, the manager is the pituitary, the employees are thyroid, adrenal cortex, and gonads. So the gonads are employees, which means they respond to the pituitary. How do they respond? Well, there has to be a stimulus, and you have two stimuli here, FSH and LH. They are secreted by the anterior pituitary, they leave the anterior pituitary, they go to the gonads and tell the gonads to secrete. If you're a female, they will secrete estrogen and progesterone. If you're male, you'll secrete testosterone and dihydrotestosterone, also known as androgens. Of course, if you're a female, the gonad is the ovary. If you're a male, the gonad is the testis. Okay, how did the anterior pituitary secrete FSH and LH? Well, it did so under an order from the hypothalamus. And this order was gonadotropin releasing hormone. Okay, gonadotropin releasing hormone. Who's the gonadotropin? This is the gonadotropin. Let's do it again. The hypothalamus secretes gonadotropin releasing hormone, which goes to the anterior pituitary and tells the anterior pituitary to secrete the gonadotropin, which is FSH and LH. They go to the gonads. In females, the gonad is the ovary and it secretes the female hormones, estrogens, and progesterone. In males, the gonad is the testis, and it secretes testosterone and the more potent dihydrotestosterone. These are known as androgens, or male hormones. Here's your hypothalamus secreting gonadotropin-releasing hormone, going to the anterior pituitary to secrete FSH and LH. They go to the gonads. In females, you get estrogen, progesterone, and inhibin. In male, you get testosterone, dihydrotestosterone, and inhibin. What's the function of inhibin? It inhibits. If you want to secrete less of these hormones, inhibin is your hero because it inhibits their secretion. Here's a very important fact that you have to keep in your mind. Just because you're a female doesn't mean that you only have female hormone. You have female hormones for the most part, but you also have a teeny tiny amount of male hormones. Conversely, if you're a male, you have mostly androgens or male hormones and a teeny tiny amount of female hormones. What do you mean by female hormones? Estrogens, not just one estrogen, but three estrogen and progesterone. What are the male hormones? You have testosterone, dihydrotestosterone, and don't forget get your adrenal androgens. Adrenal androgens are present in males and females because both of them have adrenal glands. Now let me ask you a question to make sure that you have watched the previous videos. Is the adrenal androgen secreted from the adrenal cortex or the adrenal medulla? If you say the adrenal cortex, you are correct. Good job. Now which part of the cortex? Is it the zona glomerulosa, zona fasciculata, or zona reticularis? It's the zona reticularis. How can we convert the male hormones into female hormones in a process known as aromatization? Who is the enzyme responsible for this? Aromatase. So the process that converts male hormone into female hormone is aromatization. The way I remember it is that females smell better the aroma. We, men, are doofuses. We smell like two dead fish having sex together. Okay, Medicosis, how do I remember that aromatization is female to male and not male to female? Uh, you can just remember the story of Adam and Eve. Adam came first and then Eve was taken from him. 
same thing. So here's the male hormone, and from it you get the female hormone via aromatization. Now you'll never forget it. FSH and LH. What does FSH stand for? Follicle stimulating hormone. How about LH? Luteinizing hormone. Okay. They are named based on their function in females, not males. Look at this. The follicle stimulating hormone will stimulate the follicle. Wow, imagine my shock. The luteinizing hormone will make the luteal body. Cool. How about their functions in males? Well, in males, the FSH is responsible for aromatization, which means conversion from the male hormone to the female hormone. Moreover, FSH will stimulate the Sertoli cell, which will nourish the sperm, and the sperm is responsible for fertilization. LH in male stimulates the Leydig cells. These are the cells that secrete the androgens from the testicles, and they are the testosterone and even the more potent dihydrotestosterone. If Metagosis has helped you this year, please consider buying me a coffee by going to buymeacoffee.com slash metacosis. Thank you so much in advance. This will not only help me drink coffee, but also buy books to prepare more videos for you. Let's talk about the testicle first. We start by the hypothalamus secreting GnRH, going to the anterior pituitary to secrete FSH and LH. FSH from two. Okay, so aromatization. From whom? From testosterone to estrogen. From the male hormone to the female hormone. From Adam to Eve. This is aromatization. What's the name of the enzyme? Aromatase. All of this is under the influence of FSH. Moreover, FSH will stimulate the Sertoli cell. The Sertoli cell will help you aromatize. The Sertoli cell will also nourish your sperms and sperms are responsible for fertilization. Next, LH, luteinizing hormone. The LH is going to stimulate the Leydig cell to secrete testosterone, and then testosterone will give you the even more potent dihydrotestosterone. How do we convert testosterone to dihydrotestosterone? A beautiful enzyme known as 5-alpha reductase. Now, on average, males have more red blood cells than females. Why is this? Because males have more testosterone. Moreover, males usually have a higher bone density than females. Why? Also testosterone. Males have more muscle mass. Why? Also testosterone. But please don't say males have more muscles or more numerous muscles than females. Not true. Both of us have the same numbers of muscles, which is about 620 per person. I'm talking only about the skeletal muscles, of course. Of course, you should know everything here. This is the anatomy of the female reproductive system. Okay, now which one is the actual gonad? Only number one, the ovary, of course, right and left. The menstrual cycle was discussed before in my fertilization videos in this biology playlist. Okay, so we can divide the menstrual cycle like this. Draw your line in the sand. And then we have the first half of the cycle and the second half of the cycle. Okay, the first half is known as the follicular phase, but the second half is known as the luteal phase. Now, the name has the answer. If I say the first half is the follicular phase, who is your hero? Well, if it's the follicular phase, it's going to be the follicle-stimulating hormone. Duh! The second half is known as the luteinizing phase. So this is the LH, or luteinizing hormone. What happens in the first half of the cycle? The anterior pituitary secretes FSH. FSH is called follicle-stimulating hormone. It goes to the ovary and stimulates the follicles of the ovary. The follicles will keep getting bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger until they become this super duper mature follicle known as graphene follicle. As these follicles mature, these follicles will secrete what? More estrogen. So FSH is coming from the pituitary, but estrogen is coming from the ovary. Big difference. All right, now the first half is done. What's the bridge between the first half of the cycle and the second half of the cycle? A beautiful hormone known as LH. It's gonna surge. LH surge, huge increase in LH. And this huge increase in LH is gonna rupture the follicle and release the ovum. The ovum is gonna leave the ovary and go to the fallopian tube, waiting for the sperm to fertilize the ovum, hashtag fertilization, 
now we have a zygote. Back to the ovary. What's happening in the ovary after the follicle loses its ovum because it ruptured, pew, boom, ovulation, the rest of the follicle becomes luteal body. Why? Because it looks yellow. The word luteal or luteinizing means yellow in color. What's the function of the luteal body? It's to secrete progesterone. And that's why if you look at the first half of the cycle, you only had estrogen in the first half. But in the second half, you have progesterone, 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 and some estrogen. Now, what's happening in the uterus or the endometrial lining of the uterine wall? Okay, estrogen, which means first half, helps the uterus grow. This is true. Progesterone helps the uterus grow even more. The endometrium is going to proliferate even more and it's going to add some doozy, robust, numerous blood vessels into the endometrium in the wall of the uterus. Why are we doing this? Because we are preparing for a baby. We are preparing for implantation. Remember, the blastocyst is going to get implanted here, right? Right. This embryo needs to eat, right? Right. Where does it get the food from? From the blood the blood vessels that are in the endometrium. First half, estrogen phase. Second half, progesterone phase. First half is known as proliferation. Second is known as secretory phase. First half is follicle stimulating hormone. Second half is luteinizing hormone. First half is estrogen alone. Second half is progesterone, 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 and some estrogen. After day 28, the estrogen level is gonna fall like a rock and the progesterone level is gonna drop like a rock and the endometrium is gonna drop called menstruation and the ovum is gonna drop inside the menstrual blood and the cycle gets repeated every 28 days on average. Pause and review. Pause and review. If you like this video, you will love my autonomic pharmacology course at medicosisperfectionalis.com. It has 15 videos, 20 cases, perfectionalis, ultimate notebook, and a mind map. There is also an endocrine pharmacology course on the same website. And for a limited time, get a 40% discount towards anything on my website. Just use discount code KIDNEY. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe, hit the bell, and click on the join button. You can support me here or here. Go to my website to download my courses. Thank you for watching. Be safe, stay happy, study hard. This is Medicosis Perfectionalis, where medicine makes perfect sense.